This is the Grow Your Clinic podcast from Clinic Mastery. We help progressive health professionals to lead inspired teams, transform client experiences, and build clinics for good. Now, it's time to grow your clinic. Welcome back to another episode of the Grow Your Clinic podcast. My name is Jack O'Brien. I'm your host. And today, we have another guest joining us. I am really excited to welcome Peter Birch to the podcast. Pete is the host of the Talking Health Tech podcast as well as the general manager of Meta Optima Technologies, all things tech in the health and medical space. Peter Birch, welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Good, mate. How are you? I am fantastic. And uh, this episode has been a long time coming, so I'm really excited to have you on the podcast. Tell me, what have you been up to today? What does today look like for you? Today is like any other day where I wrote a clean list of things that I really need to focus on and then... It hit one minute into the office and about 15 different new priorities hit and then I'm grappling to to do that and made sure I had time carved out in the day so that I could jump on and do this podcast because like you say, I think I've I've delayed it once before and then that threw us out by about six months. So thank you for your... uh, for reconnecting but yeah that's uh, that's every day in the life yep. it's just uh reprioritize you, you, with all good intentions you try and prioritize at the start and then review it at the end but you've got this big mess in the middle that just happened <laughs> <laughs> no, i know the feeling well uh listeners i'm going to throw it out there right now before we get to the end but uh, you can find the talking health tech podcast on all good podcast catches and players so make sure you don't miss that and you can check out peter birch on linkedin we'll make sure we link all that up in the show notes at clinicmastery.com forward slash podcast, but don't miss that opportunity. Now, Pete, before we dive into all things health tech, I've got a couple of rapid fire questions for you to begin. Are you ready? All right, let's do this. Okay, here we go. What are you reading or learning right now? When I read, I usually do an audio book. I haven't got any mm-hmm. audio books on the burn at the moment, but I'm very much into my podcast, funnily enough, it's all about the podcast at the moment. And it's not uh-huh. just because I host podcasts, it's because it's a good you know, way to consume. I guess when I look at my, my podcast list at the moment, I mean, I, there's a lot of good health tech ones from elsewhere around the world that I do tune in on a weekly. There's like the HS Health Tech Podcast with James Somaru, uh, Digital Health Today with Dan Kendall. I'm part of the, 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 the health podcast network. So there's a good group of uh, people there. So check that out. There's always something to learn in the health tech space if that's your... Your bag. Mm. I'm really enjoying at the moment though the top with Nathan Latka. So I'm very much interested in uh, software as a service, so SaaS businesses. So for those unfamiliar with what SaaS is, it's like you know when you're using a piece of software, but it's like you log on to the internet to use it. You're using your web browser to use it. That's SaaS essentially, and you pay a subscription every month to use it. I'm very much interested in that business model. So the top with Nathan Latka is like this super punchy podcast. The guy doesn't muck around. Doesn't matter how lofty the answers are, he'll get straight to the point and really want to find out about business answers. It's it's a bit jarring to listen to if you if you're looking for something a bit more kind of lofty. But it's when you're in the mood, it's like yeah, let's get to the point. There's a bunch of yeah, other right. ones that I listen to as well, but that's uh, been some pretty interesting ones at the moment. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll add a few of those to my feed. That's fantastic. Okay, number two, who inspires you? Um, I'm going to say the the two would be. You know, Scott Farquhar and, well, combined Scott Farquhar and Mike Cannon from, Mike Cannon Brooks from, from Atlassian and Melanie Perkins from, Ca- from Canva. So both of the, well, they're all CEOs of uh, Atlassian and Canva, the first two unicorns in Australia. You know, when you think about what makes them so good and different in Australia is that the, they've just had the confidence before they had the success and sure. uh, rather than waiting for the success, which is so Australian, you know, it's so <laughs> un-Australian in a way is to be confident before you've got the, the good, you know, it's not faking to make it, but it's not knowing a vision and just delivering and they've, True. they've all got that. So that's pretty inspiring. I love it. And uh, I'm sure a lot of listeners are familiar with Canva and perhaps Mel Perkins, but maybe not so much Scott Farquhar in our space. Certainly worth checking out Atlassian. Their story is uh, super inspiring. Okay, mate, number three, what did you want to be growing up? I haven't got a good story about it, but I think I remember I wanted to be a lawyer and the reason I wanted to be a lawyer was because they made lots of money um, and that was really about it. I wasn't really money driven, but that seemed like a good idea. And then I kind of hit reality and realized that worked out what a lawyer was and then (laughs) didn't want to be that anymore. Fair enough. (laughs) There's no good story there. That's all good. Uh, Number four, what's a motto that you live by? 
I know, like, I, I always read mottos and I think, oh, that's a really good one and I should stick that on my wall. I'm not, that does not really my kind of, my style, but I, I do always come back to ones that I've just started with my, my kids. I've got three kids and they're like six, three and one year old, basically. And, and with my six year old and three year old, we've always got the saying and, it, and it's two, it's birches never give up and birches always try their best. And so they've got that ingrained in their minds early. And even I've, I've referred to it from, you know, what would my kids want me to do in this situation and that would be their advice so um i'm going to say that's my motto that's awesome mate and that really resonates at the moment i have a four-year-old and a one-year-old not at the moment uh, who knows when people are listening to this but uh we do exactly the same thing mate which is really exciting our thing is that o'briens do hard things oh yeah nice <laughs> so my little four-year-old kind of just walks around parroting you know he wants to make him ask him to take out the garbage he says no i said come on mate he says yeah i know dad o'brien's do hard things <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very familiar nice, nice. Uh, good awesome well thank you for sharing mate that that's really uh yeah that's really encouraging so you wanted you grew up wanting to be a lawyer you've ended up down a path not too dissimilar as a cpa as an accountant although you don't really practice that you're in health tech so run us through the story of desiring to be a lawyer through to where you are now yeah yeah so the lawyer thing really it was me just trying to work out what i wanted to do i finished school not really knowing my my hsc result wasn't good enough to get into uni so i did a like a marketing like you know have an advertising course like that you pay for and my idea was to then do that like use that to get into a marketing degree because that that sounded interesting when i was doing that advertising course i really got into radio advertising and okay. then got really involved with community radio so that concept of community radio then stuck with me from straight out of school right to through to i guess there's still community radio today but the, the more modern version of that for me now is podcasting so i i like that the podcasting piece has come back full circle from something that you know it was basically when i left school so like I, that whole advertising thing kind of you know i i wasn't related to anyone in an advertising agency so i couldn't get a job there but then like i got a you know entry level job at a a large healthcare organization that did like assistant like medicine like so you know if you fall sick overseas and you need to be repatriated or evacuated home or if you need to know where you're you know close to hospital is a global company like that i worked there doing really basic stuff worked through for nine years up through in like management roles so really got into management and really enjoyed working alongside doctors so mm-hmm. had no medical background but enjoyed the you know engaging with people with staff making like managing a team all those kinds of bits and pieces um through that process i did my mba so i've got that like, master's of management master's of business administration i was enjoying the number side of things but again probably wasn't really that good at it in terms of when you're talking about the cpa thing so that didn't come around yet though i left that organization went to a, a travel doctor tmvc it's a group of travel medicine clinics on the, around so in the gp kind of space but gps are specializing in travel medicine as mm-hmm. in you know if you if you want not not when you fall sick overseas but if you want to get your vaccines or your medical kits before you go overseas and what, what do i need to do if i'm you know trekking in nepal that kind of stuff that organization you know been around for a long time uh, it was owned by medibank at the time but it was run as a like a its own entity. That's when I got my first kind of glimpse of startup life, where you know running a group of people, its own kind of brand, its own vision. But it was essentially like bankrolled by the largest insurer at the time, the largest insurer you know in Australia. And and they were they were really good, you know, letting the company kind of run on that path. It eventually didn't fit with the the group. It was a good time to pass on to another owner. I went through that sale process. Really got to like the whole kind of due diligence and sale kind of process of selling a business so that i went across with travel doctor to sonic healthcare so sonic again you know giant in the healthcare space pathology as well as clinics running clinics by the way so the travel doctor group was you know i think it was 100 doctors 200 staff uh 17 clinics or something like that around australia and a bunch of them in new zealand and a bit of other you know a few other different places so you know bricks and mortar clinics just the traditional kind of you know running best practice in the in the you know in the clinics all that kind of stuff manila folders everywhere by the way wow might i say oh. like so and that was the thing like the, the concept of the of that kind of thing like tra- travel medicine was really innovative back in 1987 when the company was founded because then you know where do you go when you need to speak to these places your, your normal right. gp you can't provide you that kind of niche advice and there's no it's not like there's a, a, a dermatologist for, for tra- like a specialist for travel so it's the gps that really enjoyed it F- fast forward to now 
everyone does travel medicine in the GP space. Pharmacies do travel medicine. The internet does travel medicine. So, <laughs> you know, patients don't go to a travel medicine clinic as much uh-huh. as they do. That business model suits very well to like the corporate health space now. So a lot of those clinics still exist, but they exist for sure. that, that due diligence that corporations, like their employees before they go overseas. So that's fine. I moved out of that world and really loved the concept of that entrepreneurial thing that I got a taste of, but I had that kind of the cushioning of the, the big organization. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I, I went to the big bad world of startup health land. And so startup company called MediRecords, cloud-based practice management system, which does have an allied health solution as well. So that's really some clinic owners that are looking for a, like a more, like a completely cloud-based solution to, to manage their, their practice on the day-to-day. So I was mm-hmm. doing that, but it was also to specialists and to general practitioners. Again, using my existing networks in that space, really enjoyed that whole kind of, fast paced startup world building the business and you know grew, grew the company well and it came up here where i'm at now uh, meta optima uh, which is a company originally out of vancouver and now we've got uh, an office with 10 people here in australia that, that i lead i was the, the kind of first first guy on the ground here to establish that and, and grow the business here it's a piece of technology that helps doctors diagnose skin cancers. So, you know, it's a software solution using artificial intelligence as well as just allowing them to save images of their of the, the lesions or the moles they take of, of patients. So you as a patient, you'll go in and a doctor will take pictures of your moles and then the, pa- the, the doctor will use uh, Derm Engine, which is that product to, to then manage the whole process. And a patient can get a mole scope, which is a, a digital dermatoscope, like a dermatoscope that you fit onto your mobile phone. So a, a, like a little kind of magnifier that you mm-hmm. chuck on the top over the, the, the camera and it takes up a really close picture of your mole and you put it into an app called the Molescope app and then it, uh, and you can send those pictures to your doctor as well. That's a really um, high version, you know, high level version of it. Mm-hmm. There's lots of other benefits and features and exciting things we focus on a day to day. So that's like yeah. a consumer camera, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we do both, but the like both the doctor can buy it and the consumer can buy it off our website as well. So, you know, you don't need a script, a prescription or anything like that. It suits someone really that's uh, either a long way away from their doctor, like who who is a like a skin doctor, because a lot of GPs in, in Australia do skin checks, not just the dermatologist, because we've got such sure. a big problem. You know, two out of three Australians get skin cancer. So, you know, we, we all know someone that's had a, um, a lesion removed or have a story about skin cancer. It's just our, our culture and DNA. Big problem to solve in Australia, but as a patient, you know, there's more and more patients now buying a mole scope to be able to just manage their own lesions, map them and track them over time on their body map. Because when you, when you go into a clinic, the doctor will say, you know, has this lesion changed or is this one new? And you're like, I have no idea. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, how do you know you take an image of it? That's, you know, how it's all kind of comes back. Yeah, awesome. I'm just thinking about as a, as a physio, we're often getting people to remove outer garments, clothing. We see moles over time. That'd be an interesting way to document. But you also touched on the podcast. So where did Talking Health Tech come from? Yeah, like I've always kind of, like, like I said, been the dabble with the... Um the, the the radio thing so i really wanted to kind of just and and just generally interested in podcasts long before i started a podcast i was looking for a health tech podcast online something to like for the australian market because we've got quite a like a it's got similarities with elsewhere in the world but quite a unique problems as well and, and opportunities nothing that was suited for this space the only content that's available per se or information available is just written stuff that, that companies are writing not anything to listen to there's such great such great medium for stories as you know that, that podcasts can can be so the opportunity then came up so look you know i, I got access to some some recording gear and access to a media room and just thought you know what let's i'm already having a lot of good conversations with people in my network put some structure around it put it on air and it's just well, on the uh, podcast air and uh, it's just kind of grown from there and so it's you know just a it's not affiliated with any other kind of thing it's just my own kind of thing i do in, in any kind of spare time I have, but it, that in itself has become a really kind of good conversation starter in the, the space and just an interesting mm. way to meet new people too. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, mate. Personally, I'm a listener and uh, although not always um, directly relevant to me, I find it really stimulates thought and again, it's more exposure to some really interesting people and things that are happening. Is there any particular episodes off the top that you think our listeners as allied health clinic owners would find really relevant or useful? Yeah, totally. I mean, there's, you can start from the bottom and work your way up. No, but the, um, <laughs> the, the one of the really good ones would be number 12, Katrina Rotto from Train IT Medical. She's really passionate about health 
technology in the allied health space and how to do that in an effective way. And she's got a really nice philosophy towards implementing solutions within a practice. She was a practice manager herself. She's also, you know, a, a teacher and she's, she's well respected in the space. I think she refers to herself as the Switzerland of, of technology within healthcare because she's not affiliated with one and she just loves them all apparently. So <laughs> that's good. Uh, you know, we recently had on as well, um, Pete, the CEO from MediPass, who has, you know, some great stories to talk about and, to, and, and a lot of your listeners as well would be familiar with MediPass. They might be using it to process their payments. So it's interesting hearing the story of how that came about, um, comparisons to other parts of the world. We're up to what, episode 33 now and, we've, you know, they come out weekly. I used to just only like flick and like find the one where I knew the person that, you know, and was interested in that person. What I found with what's, what's great and what, you know, is great when I listen to your podcast as well is that I, I, I might not know who, who you've got on the show, but that's part of the journey and the experience and you learn something new, even if it's in an industry or niche that I'm not usually familiar with, that I can always find out something that's relevant and, and um, I can be curious about. So that's, I encourage and find a, find a random one and have a listen because it's sometimes it can be focused more on the technology space and the sometimes the GP side. Although I just I just saw as well uh, episode sixteen, Karen Finnan, the online physio, would be a good yep. one too. So she's got uh, yeah, right she was on ours a number of uh, yeah right at the start actually probably one of our first ten episodes. So I'd, yeah. I'd love to hear her perspective on your podcast as well. So. Peter, tell me, you, you have such a great perspective across tech in the health space. What are some trends that you're seeing when it comes to technology and healthcare? The healthcare industry in Australia, it, it's, it's not broken. Like healthcare in Australia is good. We've got a good healthcare system. We've got excellent providers in the GP. You know, as an Australian, you can get access to healthcare uh, anyway. I think that uh, for the doctors, the practitioners, the those providing the healthcare services, there's a lot of pressure on them to, to meet expectations, to run a business with, with an aging population, with us getting more chronic illness and and more information and competing competition that's coming about for a doctor, for a practitioner, there's a lot of pressure. So the reason why technology kind of is growing a lot within the practice space, but it's not sometimes might not get a huge amount of traction. It's just got a lot of interest is there's an opportunity to create a huge amount of efficiency and a huge amount of kind of better patient outcomes, I guess. But where a lot, so much technology and healthcare fails, especially in Australia for you know some very recurring reasons. And, and often it's because, you know, a, a very clever and very entrepreneurial software vendor might come up with a solution and go, you know what, I think that this would be a really good idea. And if only I could just build this, app or build this thing and then all these people will start using it and then i can just sit back and wait for the money to roll in but th those people who make those who have you know th they're quickly you know brought down to, to earth once mm -hmm. it goes live because it's it's not solving a problem my, my usual test to see how kind of you know where you are at in terms of um you know adoption of technology is if if, if you see a software update on your phone like how quickly or like what's your gut feel when you see it do you go oh, I don't want to do it because, you know, that means something might break or um, I can't be bothered because me, I'm looking at, I'm like, just do it. Let's just see what happens. And, you know, <laughs> can't like, wait to get home till you plug it into power <laughs> so you can get it updated, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, like, you know, and, and that's okay. Like, and, and everyone can be at different levels of the spectrum. But wherever you are on the spectrum, it's it's always comes down to use the technology not just as the, like that's not the, the the end game it's the it's got to get there for a reason to achieve a purpose like technology but for what cause so and actually on that point not to keep plugging a podcast but like well i'm actually getting a lot of kind of learnings from my from my guests too the, the episode with matteo bush is an amazing episode to listen to it's just uh, listen to that and i was like that that's that's all about technology being implemented for the, the wrong reasons and that's kind of shaped even kind of my new thinking of, of um, how to use technology in healthcare so if I do end up using any of his terms in this it's probably because I've Matteo has said it first so full credit to him sorry like what, what you're seeing is either tech being developed for tech's sake or people just implementing it without a clear objective or it's not achieving and there's not an outcome in mind both 
completely both. And and it's not like that's not the that's not always the case, but that's when it usually fails, when it goes bad. And that's usually why people don't implement technology is because they're afraid of it going bad. And like if I think of it from a from a practitioner's perspective or a practice owner's perspective, and, and especially if you've got a number of healthcare providers that, that you're responsible for, it's hard enough quite frankly, sometimes to to ensure that you've got a happy, healthy workforce and that uh-huh. they will come to work and they'll feel this shift. And that, you know, and, and so many times I've seen really good technology that will solve a problem that falls down right at the end, like for, like rolling out to big enterprise in the end, because this doctor over here is not happy with it. And if this doctor leaves, they've got no solution at all. So yeah. it's, it's, you know, knowing who the end user is, but also solving that problem too. So within your practice, don't do it for the sake of just doing it, but at the same time, work with your staff and your and your practitioners and your partners. The hardest thing to do in, in healthcare is change management and technology and healthcare is all about change management. So mm-hmm. that's um, get, get across that and read as much as you can in that space. <laughs> okay, so tell me, what are some of the, the most exciting, progressive, positive tech advances that you've seen in health in recent times? I would say the use of artificial intelligence in healthcare more broadly is really interesting, exciting, and that's why it is such a buzzword at the moment, which can be... What, what, what is AI? So AI is the automation of things that you would normally... Like a, a computer doing things for you that you would otherwise have to do, I guess, is a starting point. So mm-hmm. you, you, you train an algorithm to be able to perform a task. And there are different types of artificial intelligence. And one of those types of artificial intelligence is machine learning. So artificial intelligence actually has existed for a very long time. It's not just like this new thing, but the machine learning, the, the ability to train a machine to be able to do something and then then it goes and does it and then it keeps teaching itself. So rather than, it's not just like writing a code to say, do this and then if this, then that. It's it's almost like this ongoing beast that keeps growing and growing and growing. It's not a beast. That's a bad way to describe it. But it, it, <laughs> it, it, it starts learning and getting better. And, you know, there's, there's, you see like the, the common ones are like the um, deep blue, the, 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 the trained computers be able to play chess and then see X amount of kind of moves in advance. Uh, so, in, so by doing that in healthcare, there's AI for um, like workflow efficiency. And we've got a bunch of AI in all our things. Like you go to your phone and you go to, your photos and if you try and search for a picture of the beach just by looking at it it takes you ages to find a picture of the beach but if you go on your phone and then go over to the search button bottom bottom right and then you type beach at the top all of a sudden all the pictures that you've taken at the beach will come up and you haven't written beach in there it just knows that the beach is there because that's what it's the computer has taught itself to do so So um so using that in healthcare for for good reasons is 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 great and so there, there there can be ai for you know that, that's that's implemented poorly in healthcare, and and that's okay. But where it's done well, there's like a company like Life Whisperer. Their their whole thing is uh, helping expectant parents who are going under like IVF treatment uh, to help the practitioner um, select the best embryos to to go through the process of IVF. Because if anyone's been through the IVF process. You know, they, they know that it's a very trying time for the patients. A lot of just sitting and waiting and crossing your fingers and hoping that the one they selected that to, to be fertilized works. But we're using AI, it looks at the image and then the computers, you know, like it's learned and, and it's, it, it makes a better, essentially, guess or, you know, a, a prediction of which embryo is most likely to uh, be fertilized and then the intention is for it to be better outcomes rather than just a, a human doing it. The same with like with our one without like do this, using AI to help with skin cancer imaging, it's rather than looking at thousands and thousands of images every day for a, for a person, they might get very good at it, but a person gets mm-hmm. tired and a person, you know, might need coffee at the start of the day or might be having a bad day at home, or, whereas a computer just constantly goes or an algorithm will just continually go. So that, that's really exciting implementation of AI in, uh, in healthcare. That's awesome, mate. What about in, uh, from a client experience perspective? So maybe not so much from the, the clinical element, but where do you see the opportunities for tech to play a greater role in the experience in healthcare? Yeah. If I think as a patient, I want to be more engaged in my healthcare, I'm, I, of course, and it's not for everyone, but some, like you don't just go to a physician or a, um, a practitioner or anyone that have the treatment and then kind of just forget about it. It's, it's usually you're researching it a lot beforehand or you're thinking about it afterwards or you have to explain it to someone else. And then, so having information available to you that's meaningful is necessary and tools like PhysiTrack, which help, 
this two way kind of like the patient gets involved in terms of having something that they take away and, and engage with that then the physician can then also see that and can complete this loop. I think a lot of practitioners, especially when they're looking at improving the experience in their practice, uh, either are looking for or would benefit from solutions that enable a patient to be more active in their healthcare process because that's what that's what in the healthcare regime because that's what patients want so and um, deserve right and deserve yeah completely but the reason why you would implement them in your in your clinic wasn't just because the other physio down the road or, or it doesn't have to be a physio the, the other the other mm-hmm. physician down the road is using it if it suits your practice and you think that it will actually perform a, a particular task that will get you from where you are now to the next level, then that's a good reason to implement a piece of software. PR, I'm going to loop back a little bit here. And you mentioned that often technology and team are the hardest things to line up and to, to implement and drive forward. I want to pull on the, the leadership string for you. You've, you've been a general manager, you've, you've got your MBA, you've got all those sort of things. If you were to speak to clinic owners now, what's some tips or advice you would have around that change management and implementation of tech into their clinics? You need an advocate. You need a champion and it, and it can't be you. You should be an advocate for it if you want it, obviously, but you need another you know, clinician involved in the implementation process. And hopefully it's one that isn't the one that everyone would expect to be. It's not just the, uh, <laughs> the obvious, you know, choice. The, the one, the obvious choice that is, is going to like pick up tech straight away. You should just assume that they're going to use it and love it. Like they, they don't need to be in the camp from the start in, in, in front of you. Otherwise you could be pulled far from like, if you're in the office plotting out how to kind of roll out the software and then just say, you know what, this person, they might struggle with it, but look, they're just going to have to adapt. They'll just have to learn. They're the ones that you want in the process from the start. And you want their input and you need to listen to them as to why it's an issue. And if you can find out what is driving it and then find out what the commonality is between why you want to implement the software and what they're trying to achieve and then work towards that in a broader and broader way, then you'll probably find some success. And it's not, it's not something you can implement straight away. And don't be pressured by software vendors in terms of, you know, you need to implement something now. It's, it's a decision that you make. At the same time, don't procrastinate for the sake of procrastinating. So, sure. uh, and don't sit on your heels about it. It's something you do need to do something. If, you, if you're feeling a nagging kind of need to do it, then there's probably a good reason. It doesn't matter how many business cases you write or how many whatever. If, if you're the owner and you know your business and that you, need, you know that something needs to change, then something needs to change. But you've got to get the physicians on board because the rest will flow. That's amazing. Uh, listeners, just pause right now and let that sink in find an advocate that's not the obvious choice find the win-win and lead your team well that'll change some clinics i reckon pete that's that's absolutely unreal we've touched on so many different things here today and i know i'm really inspired and excited about the prospects of technology in the healthcare space from allied to medical dental and, and across all the others if people wanted to dip their toes in the technological waters and uh, check out your podcast and maybe get in touch via LinkedIn. Can you again fill us in on how we can do so? Yep. You can check out talkinghealthtech.com or just search Talking Health Tech on any of the podcast providers. On LinkedIn, type Peter Birch and it should come up. And my advice for getting involved is check out the ones like peruse around, kick the tires on some things, but find something that interests you about it and then focus on that area. So you you don't have to do it just because everyone else is doing it. And if technology isn't your bag straight away, there's probably like find out why you're doing this in the first place. And there's probably a piece of technology that's connected to that. Google is an amazing thing to find out technology that if you think there should be an app to do this, I would recommend you don't go off and start building it yourself. I recommend you Google it (laughs) and there's probably about 15 others that do it. Awesome, mate. Great parting wisdom. Listeners, we'll make sure we link all that up on the show notes over at clinicmastery.com forward slash podcast. All the links will be over there. And like always, we really appreciate your honest reviews and ratings on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and all those places. That's it for this episode. Peter Birch, thank you for joining us, mate. Jack, thanks for having me. And listeners, thank you for joining us. Can't wait to bring you another episode of the Grow Your Clinic podcast again really soon. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to the Grow Your Clinic podcast. To find out more about past episodes or how we can help you, head to www.clinicmastery.com forward slash podcast. And please remember to rate and review us on your podcast player of choice. See you on the next episode.